Hi anyone, I'm Burkle, and welcome to another episode of me playing Minecraft on the Skyfall SMP. In the last episode, we made this insanely overpowered and simple gold farm that you use looting for, so you get like triple the drops. So the amount of gold we have is uh, amazing for the little amount of AFKing I've done over here. So this is all just in the past like 30 minutes of just kind of playing, and these have been like a couple hours of, of doing AFK time. So it's a lot of crafting, yeah. Uh, I might try to come up with a way of fixing that crafting in the future, but uh, I need to start using the gold because right now it's just sitting there. I want to make a bartering farm, so that's what we're doing today. Uh, but before we do that, let's just go over the little bit of updates that we have for the gold farm from last episode. I added this button here that will activate the clock up there. I just was tired of flying up there every time I left the farm and came back. Because whenever you reload the chunks, it kind of resets the clock because the piston's pushing up. Sometimes it's caught in the middle. Long story short, this button activates and that clock goes again. Then down here, we have this leaf block that I chained it to. Uh, it used to be just glazed terracotta, but I chained it to a leaf block so that way it's unspawnable. So then it's also unstickable. Yeah, those are the two fixes that will kind of make the farm easier to use. And... Let's see, now what we'll do is start making the bartering farm. And I think it's best to start with the item sorters first in most scenarios. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to make it on the same level as these uh, sorters. Just so everything's kind of in the same place and it all's happy and fun time and meshes together. Uh, let's see, we're, we're going to need a, quite a few sorters. So it takes a lot of items and a lot of hoppers. But any kind of bartering farm takes a lot of hoppers. I, I don't really think it you can get around that <laughs> it's just gonna be a little chaotic as we're going so i hope you find it interesting hope you have fun have find it fun this is the platform that the items for the bargaining farm is going to end up going to i'm just going to use shulker loaders just because it makes everything simpler to hold and transfer get everything done so let me show you how i build these shulker loaders i think it's by kale hammeron that's the one i use the most um, I like to stack up a couple blocks. Then here we need a dispenser to dispense out empty shulkers. Uh, some temporary blocks make it easier. Then we need a dropper to drop the empty shulkers into that dispenser. It makes it easier because the dropper will transfer the items. The, uh, the dispenser will place the shulker. Then we need some hoppers facing into there to give it more shulkers, empty shulkers chest here just to store more empty shulkers it's all about the empty shulkers here uh and sticky piston here well this will fire and that's what breaks the shulker when it's full and we need some observers this will be facing out of the hopper that faces into the shulker there this is what feeds into the items into the shulker itself we need an observer facing out of that hopper and then an observer facing down from there. So let's use some more temporary blocks over here. And face down. So this will fire once it reads and it's a full signal. So let's put the comparator. That's what's going to be reading it. So here we need a comparator. So this block here would be a shulker. And it would read out how much is in there. Once it reads out that it's full. Get the full block here. Then it will allow this redstone to be 15. So that's going to be a full signal. What we need is a redstone block here and then another piece of redstone there. So this is 15 power and this is 14. Once this shulker here, that is technically a block right now, it reaches 15 power, this will reach 15 power. So once it's full, this will become fully maxed out. So it's 15 power. So what we need to do is put an observer to detect when that happens. And let's see if I could get the angle right. But it's a little complicated. And boom. So that's everything we need for it, other than putting shulkers inside, obviously. And it's pretty simple. You could technically stack these right next to each other. They might fire off a little awkwardly at the beginning, but once you get it started, it's pretty foolproof from then on. And they also might fire into like the left or right hopper. So if you do separate them, it makes it a little simpler and like yeah, uh, better for just everything in general. So I'm going to make up the rest of these shulker loaders that I need and I'll be right back with you.
the 18 shulker loaders are in. These things are great because uh, they take up way less space than 27 double chest. I think. I, I don't know. The, it works great. If you have a shulker farm, I would suggest using these shulker loaders because you could also put the items in on the sides and then that speeds it up by three times or two times, however you want to do it. Uh, depends how close you have them together. So like these ones will be using uh, on both sides and then on each of these, they'll be on one side. But yeah, the, these are the shulker loaders. The next things we need to do are the sorters. So some of them are non stackable items. So we'll be needing to use a lays for that. So I need to duplicate them. Uh, I'm going to run back to the house real quick and get a music disc to get a few more of these guys. Yeah, I'll be putting a bunch of the impulse item sorters on top. So let's do that real quick. Okay, I've got a good amount of the LAs in. All the item sorters are in apart from the last LA one. So uh, I'll show you how I do it. You just put in some music. Any of the songs work. Uh, this is probably my favorite, so I'll use this one. And then you give them an amethyst chart. They duplicate. Then you just uh, give them an item. Any item works. Then they'll follow you around. So let me put this guy back so he doesn't follow me as well. Because it's better when you have do them one at a time. Then you go to your area that you want to go to sort and you got to place your minecart down and you need to throw that item in for them to find then they get trapped by the chest and then you just push them all the way onto the hopper that way they all do what you need then whenever you're ready to set your filter you just take the carrot and then you replace it with whatever you're trying to filter and it solves all your problems I'm going to get rid of these. It's unnecessary. Um, that's pretty much it for those. Let's see. The next thing after the, all the sorters are put in place, because uh, we still need to put all the items, but I'll do that once we start getting the actual item. Hello, buddy. Um, is the conveyor belt, because I want to be using, I want to use something similar to this with the ice road. Uh, but I'm going to put that all along all of these hoppers and where these redstone blocks are pretty much. So that ice path will follow along and the, all the items will be pushed along all these sorters. And yeah, it'll be happy ma magic fun sauce. So you may be asking, why are there flying machines in this bartering farm? Isn't that a little unnecessary? Yes, uh, I I agree. It, this is all a very unnecessary. You could probably just use hoppers and it won't really get clogged. It, it'll be fine. It's just, I, I want it to be different sometimes, you know? So let's be different together, guys. Uh, that's impossible. But uh, let's, let's think about something else. So these flying machines are going to be what push the items off of these leaf blocks because the piglin will be up here trading and dropping their items and they'll be falling onto the, the leaf blocks. Then the flying machines will be pushing back and forth, back and forth, which will be pushing the items onto the ice track, which then once it reaches the end of each track, it fires at each corner and then flies over and then gets aligned on the chest similar to over there and then flies along and into the item sorters. So it's pretty simple in the grand scheme of things if you just break it down into its parts. But next part we need to do is the actual piglin bartering farm. So that's gonna go right above here at the same level as this AFK spot. So in the end, if we wanna just AFK while we're doing the bartering, it's all at a good spot.
Piggy trades, piggy trades. Uh, it's off right now. Both of them are off. What we need to do is start the system by adding some gold. We'll put gold into that one and put gold into this one. And it will automatically go off once it's full enough using the, this chest back here to compare out how much is inside the system and make sure that there's enough to fill up both of twice. Okay, so now that they're getting their gold, we can turn on the gold dispensers and their droppers, not dispensers, but dispensers is a better word. So yeah, they get their gold and then as soon as they're done trading, they receive another gold right away. And this block pushes out. So whatever lands on the chain gets pushed off immediately. And it always lands in the same space just so everything kind of lines up better. And we'll start launching the flying machines to collect all the items so it doesn't back up. That's pretty much a system. Once you break it down to its parts, then everything's a little easier to understand. Uh, the flying machines will be pushing the items into this hole where everything will get aligned off of the chest and bounced along the item sorters. Then these allays, it was a little more complicated than just putting them in here, switching out the carrots because like you can't get grab the carrots while they are in the in the minecart. You have to take them out and then switch them back. So I just suggest using whatever item you want to use from the beginning. And then they're trained off of the note blocks. So every time the flying machine hits back to this side, the note block will fire and they'll be like, OK, so I can drop it into this chest or into this hopper. And the hopper will release once the note block goes off. So yeah, it's pretty simple. Let's see down below what kind of items we're getting, which is it's pretty ridiculous. I would say I've put maybe 24 blocks or stacks of blocks of gold in the system. So not a little, not a lot, but we've we got a lot of items. <laughs> got a lot of uh, blackstone, a lot of gravel, arrows. Quartz we're getting a good amount of. I've already taken out four boxes, five boxes, I think. So we're getting a good amount of that. String is nice. The, the leather is nice. Never have to use any other kind of leather farm. The obsidians are great. And then the, these like non-stackable items, are, are they're doing fantastic. They're, they're great little workers. They're just not super detail-oriented when it comes to bottles. So like these kind of combine some, but whatever. It's not a big deal. Yeah, uh, that's it for the bartering farm i think this farm is pretty much done the only thing i would want to add would be a nugget to ingot crafting like machine like it makes it easier to craft or it'll just give you the amount of nuggets to craft a set of ingot um but that's not really necessary for this so i'm just gonna head back home and do a little bit of building to finish off the episode because we haven't really done much building lately we've just done a bunch of technical building so I think that's it for our gold farm bartering farm engine it's, that's what it is this is the engine to power our builds i think Okay, I don't think getting a zombie head is worth it if I die, you know? So I'm going to work on that, that skill of uh, getting uh, <laughs> the, the heads from creepers, but 
uh, you do what you do what you can when you can I, i'm not very well practiced but these are the statues that i made in the turnaround about to be like one of the center points of the town because villagers is where we make our bread and butter here we we trade with villagers we make we make our stuff so uh i felt like they should be with the statues that are like in the pillar of the community so uh came up with this design i was looking on pinterest i found something there and then i just wanted to simplify it because it was like a little a little more to it so i i just simplified it down to be just kind of like a villager um and then i have them holding the rgb colors of my shirt because um this is my city so uh i get to put my finishing touch on um but yeah so they're a little weathered on this side from where the water is and then over here we have this one that's a little like uh multicolored. I'm not sure like I'm in love with the color shift between them. I, I do want a, a darker one uh, just to have like a different tone to it but I don't know if the uh, deep slate to andesite is a great color shift. It's a little harsh but uh it's cool at the same time. Over here we have a stone and andesite one and then a uh, cobblestone uh, which kind of goes with the mossy and stuff. But yeah I like them. They're pretty cool. They're ni ni neat little fellas and they're cool feature for people to stop and explore and then we did a little bit of terraforming down here got these horsies out but they keep wanting to like explore this area uh, so i don't know what's up with them the the terraining it's nice to get like a plateau working and then work up from there to the next spot because that's where the water ran down and then flowed and you can use that kind of mentality to shape where the terrain will go um, i want to put a parking lot over here for the guests of the lighthouse to park at not so, so many spots just like four to six maybe and then it would be a street going down this way to meet up with the road and then i think we would do the town center right here and then we'd start build, building like actual city things over here so it'd be we'll do a berkey's convenience store next and then we'll do an apartment building and some other like city style buildings that are going to be housing farms and the like. So yeah, um, that's the episode. We thank you for watching. Thank you for watching this episode of Burkle Plays Skyfall. If you enjoyed this episode, please like and share it with a friend. I hope you enjoyed us building the bartering farm as well as this terraining and fun statues. Yay! All right, thank you. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> I'm so dumb. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> Bye. Thank you.